Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith. Thank you so much for joining me as we talk about tonight's episode of The Bachelor. I sincerely apologize I didn't do this last week. Under strict instructions, I stayed in bed as I had the flu. I didn't want to get you sick, but uh, I'm back now. And let's talk about tonight's episode. Tonight's episode that reminds us all that this show brings the crazy on Monday nights. So we might as well start with Corinne. Actually, you know what? Let's get to Corinne after. Let's talk about Dominique first. So Dominique, you don't know who Dominique is? Well, that's okay. Neither did Nick. So Dominique was on the show, and she was whining, and she was crying. He doesn't pay any attention to me. I didn't come here just to sit around the house. So she goes, and she talks to him. And then he's like, oh, wait, you're still here? And then he sends her home. No, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. Dominique, you should have just stayed quiet, and you could have lived in the lap of luxury for a couple more days. But no, nope, you had to go and ruin it. Now, in Dominique's defense, of course, she was like, I'm not getting any time with Nick. Well, if you spend as much time trying to talk to Nick as you did about whining about not talking to Nick, things could have ended up a little different for you. Unfortunately, that's not the way it played out. One of the wonderful things about going on the show is all the fantastic dates you could go on. And what a dream come true it was for some of these ladies to get to go and hang out with the Backstreet Boys. Woo-wee! Remember the Backstreet Boys? Well, all five of them were on the show. And for those of you wondering, yes, Kevin Richardson was there. Anyways, so that was kind of an interesting thing because they got a chance to do some choreographed dance with the Backstreet Boys and go and perform with them. And listen, I've got nothing against the Backstreet Boys, but it was just so you so unique and so awkward at the same time. Unique in the sense of this is what the Backstreet Boys are doing with their career now, and awkward in the sense of so the Backstreet Boys come together and they decide which one of these ladies is going to get a special dance with Nick. So while the Backstreet Boys are serenading Nick and... Whichever girl it was he cho chose, I forgot her name. The other women are standing off to the side. But I really felt bad for the audience. It's like, you mean to tell me I paid to come and see the Backstreet Boys and I'm just watching, like, some guy who's going to be on The Bachelor dancing with some girl? Anyways, that was just a whole weird scene to me. But it, quite frankly, as soon as Kevin Richardson showed up, it was kind of a weird scene to me because he's like the funny Backstreet Boy. It's like he doesn't really do anything. He's just there to, like, to round out the five... So, you know, they've got like a five-on-five five team. Anyways, um, we're ready to talk about Corinne now. Can I just say, one of the things that I find to be one of the sexiest qualities in a woman, one of the most attractive traits a woman can have, is confidence. So anytime I see Corinne, I'm just thinking to myself, I could never be into you, girl. Because this woman is so whiny and so needy. Like she's, and she goes from one extreme to the other. On the one extreme, she's pouring whipped cream all over Nick or all over herself and then telling Nick to lick it off. And then on the other extreme, she's whining and crying because she's talking to someone else. Then she's trying to seduce him in the jumbo gym or jungle gym, or whatever the hell you call it. And she's like all up in his kitchen. And then the next thing you know, she's having a little sulk fit and she's sleeping at the rose ceremony because she doesn't want to go and participate. Now that whole rose ceremony thing was silly for the simple fact that you mean the camera person couldn't tap her on the shoulder and say, hey, the rose ceremony is about to start? So ridiculous. Anyways, not a big fan of Corinne. She's obviously, you know, the chat of the season. So hopefully in the next episode or two, she'll be gone. But the, the, the contestant of the day has to be Vanessa. Canadian. How amazing is Vanessa? So Vanessa goes on this nice little one-on-one -on -one date with him, and she has a good time, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, with exception of the fact that she threw up a couple times, but whatever. Not judging. But then, you know, there's this big pool party in lieu of the cocktail party, and there again is Corinne all up in Nick's kitchen, and Nick's all up in it too. And then the women are like, what the hell's going on here? And some of them turn away, and they're disgusted, and they're disappointed. But Vanessa calls him to task. And it's basically like, are you here to meet a wife or are you here to, you know, and I was blown away when she says to him, I'm not, dis paraphrasing, I'm not like disappointed in her actions, I'm disappointed in yours. No, she didn't. How amazing is that? 
Can you imagine the level of confidence it takes for her to go into this situation and say, listen, I understand you're the guy calling the shots, but this isn't what I'm here for. And if that's what you're all about, I wish you hadn't given me the rose. I'm like, hi, you'll do. Not only is she pretty fantastic, I think she's already established herself. If she doesn't win this, she's established herself as the next Bachelorette. The level of confidence on her while everyone else is running around feeling, oh, what about me? What about me? She's like, uh, no, that's not how you play me. I'm Canadian. Love it. Anyways, what did you guys think of tonight's episode? Let me know. CFL underscore fan on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Witty Whittier and Witty Whittier.com. Thank you so much for checking this out. Next week looks awesome. I will be back. I hope you will be as well. Until then, I'll talk to you soon.